Hi there. In this topic video, we're going to focus on economies of scale and in particular, the internal scale economies available to businesses as they expand in the long run. In the long run, a firm is able to adjust all of its factors of production and indeed the whole scale of operations can change. By doing so, it may find that the unit cost or the average cost of production uh, starts to fall. And this is because it's benefiting from one or more internal economies of scale. So internal economies of scale, very simply, are the fall in long run average costs as the firm increases the scale of production. Don't forget that in the long run, all production costs are variable. So we don't necessarily make a distinction between fixed and variable inputs. Essentially, as the business gets bigger, it should be able to achieve scale economies. And that's true for all businesses, pretty much. Although, of course, the extent to which they can exploit them will vary from industry to industry. Now, here's a key point. These reductions in long run unit cost uh, represent an improvement in long run productive efficiency. And we know that economies of scale can give a business a significant cost advantage in the market. So let's have a look at uh, some examples of internal scale economies that a business might use. Many of them relate to the nature of large scale production. So, for example, there are lots of different technical economies where more efficient production techniques lead to increasing returns to scale. A good example is the idea of containerization. A uh, container, if you think about the cubic capacity of a container, bigger containers can clearly carry more if they're used to capacity. Uh, there's a kind of indivisibility of a container. If you can pack in a lot of small iPhones or iPads, the, the unit cost of transportation is going to come down. There's a second example there showing specialist capital equipment. Uh, specialised pieces of equipment can be used to, to grow capacity, replace labour in many cases. There's a, a robotic car assembly plant. Purchasing, purchasing economies are really quite important, otherwise known as marketing economies. So big firms can achieve unit cost reductions in the cost of purchasing uh, raw materials and components through, typically through things like bulk buying. And that particular type of power is called monopoly power. And we cover that in a separate topic video. Across many businesses, of course, the idea of specialisation and the division of labour is applied to a very, ex very large extent. So deep division of labour in manufacturing, particularly in jobs which require complexity. And uh, check out our topic video on division of labour. As you learn by doing, of course, as you specialise, in theory over time you, more, you become more productive. And that brings down the cost per unit produced. Now here are some more internal scale economies. Many big businesses use specialist managers, managerial economies of scale, uh, lawyers, accountants, specialist sales staff, specialist advisors. In theory, if you, if you use managers who are good throughout the supply chain, you can increase productivity. Of course, the other danger is that too many managers relative to the, uh, the hard-working ground troops, if you like, can cause diseconomies of scale. Financial economies are quite important. Uh, bigger firms, on average, can tend to borrow from the financial markets at a cheaper rate of interest, partly because they've got a better credit rating and they're perceived as being at lower risk of failure than perhaps a small business or a startup. Big firms can also go to the bond markets, for example, perhaps, and borrow money long term quite cheaply. Uh, risk bearing is quite important, so large firms have the financial resources to diversify across different countries, across different markets, across different products. And of course, diversification is a means of spreading business risk, uh, be it uh, you can often take a brand name and, and uh, extend or leverage that brand across different markets. So think about the Easy Group in terms of EasyJet and Easy Cinema and Easy Bus. Version have done likewise, cheated to you, the obvious big examples there, risk bearing economies of scale. Now one that's very rarely mentioned, but hopefully watching this topic video will give you a nice advantage, 
is the idea of network economies of scale. Think about businesses like Uber, Airbnb, Dropbox, uh, Netflix, those, those kind of fast growing businesses, which just a few years ago were kind of startups and now they're almost, they're almost monopolies or they're almost the industry themselves. Well, these types of businesses have exploited in particular network economies of scale. So think about the uptake of a currency, a language, a new technology or platform such as uh, Dropbox or Uber. Okay, The marginal cost of one extra user joining the network is pretty much zero. Fair enough, pretty much zero. Of course, that's great for the business because they can sell more, their revenues go up. But if, if these businesses have high uh, fixed costs of running the platform, every extra user brings down the unit cost of running a digital platform business. So there's a huge battle, for example, in the TV and internet and film streaming industries to get more customers installed and subscribed. Because the more customers there are, given the cost of digital download, the lower is the unit cost. Do you get the picture here? Here are some good examples, hopefully, of how businesses, pretty much every business, but obviously the big ones can achieve this significantly, can achieve internal economies of scale. Here's a good example. The uh, fast-growing global cruise industry uses the order of containerization or the economics of the law of large dimensions. So an increase in the surface area of a container be it a cruise ship, a lorry, an oil tanker, will lead to a more than proportionate increase in its volume, bringing potentially bringing down the unit cost per user. Some of these container, some of these um, cruise ships, are pretty much small towns in terms of the number of passengers that they can carry up to capacity. It's not just the actual cruise ships themselves. Think about the economies of of scale in massive ports around the world. So a TEU is a 20-foot equivalent unit, a.k.a. a standard container. And this, this chart shows the biggest ports in the world in 2015, capable of handling every year millions, yes, millions of these containers. So economies of scale, not just uh, goods and services that go to the consumer, the final buyer, but also in, in industries such as logistics and freight and power, and telecommunications. This is we live in a world of scale economies. Doesn't mean that small firms can't survive. They do. We'll do that in a separate topic note. But uh, this is important. In fact, it's very exciting. I could I could barely contain myself to show you this slide. And what about computer games? Well, here's a good example of where the marginal cost of one extra buyer, you know, and uh, basically producing one extra copy of a game is pretty pretty small, and maybe a few dollars or a few cents. The big costs of making computer games tend to be, of course, the development costs, the testing, and obviously the marketing. So here are some big computer and video game publishers, that the largest, in fact, in the world in 2015. Sony right ahead, Tencent, Microsoft, Nintendo, Activision, Blizzard, etc., EA, EA Sports. These are big, big businesses, and computer and video game publishers truly understand the concept of economies of scale. This wouldn't be a topic video, would it, unless we included a nice diagram. So let's just finish off with this. Here's our unit cost curve on the y-axis. A lot of students, for some bizarre reason, put price on the y-axis. Now, it's unit cost, we think, we're, we're focusing on here. And output on the x-axis, moving from left to right, the firm is increasing the scale of production. So what's the story here? Well, when the average costs fall, we're moving, for example, from Q1 to Q2, effectively more than doubling output, the unit cost goes down. That is internal economies of scale. They may flatten out, they may kind of just gently ebb away, but eventually we get to Q3, for example, in this situation. That's the lowest point or the minimum point on the average cost curve. That's known as the point of productive efficiency. And you may also have come across it as the minimum efficient scale. Thereafter, some diseconomies may step in the business may become too big beyond its optimum size. And again, we cover diseconomies of scale in a separate topic video. Okay, so this has been a blitzy way through some of the examples of 
internal economies of scale. In other words, put in a nutshell, the unit cost advantage from increasing the scale and the size of your business. Hope it's been useful. Uh, please check in again sometime soon for another topic video.